Welcome. Welcome to Matinair on Air. Jane Matinair, Greg Bach, Calvin, coming to you live from our studio in beautiful downtown Waukesha. You can always join us, call or text at 844-967-2789 or leave a comment on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and the platform Elon has ruined. We have a very, very busy show today. It is Thursday. That means public service announcements. Woo! With Dr. Kristen Lyerly, she will be coming our way at 1106. If you ever have a, a health question for Dr. Lyerly, you can certainly call. You can text it in. You can email us mm-hmm. at uh, Matt Nair on air, all one word, Matt Nair on air at civicmedia.us. And then we'll talk some sports with Acme Packing Company's Paul Noonan. That is at 1133. It's a very, very busy show. It is a busy show. We are going to start off, and I wish we didn't have to. Mm. I, I really do. I wish we didn't have to start here, but we're going to. Yeah. Yesterday was the sixth anniversary of the Parkland shooting in Florida with 17 dead, 17 injured. According to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been at least 49 mass shootings in America in the first 46 days of this year. And yesterday was another one. Kansas City Mayor Quentin Lucas said, quote, parades, rallies, schools, movies, it feels like almost nothing is safe. This after the celebration party for the Kansas City Chiefs yesterday and their Super Bowl victory in Kansas yeah. City. Yeah. Gal of gunfire erupted at uh, in a crowd at a rally after the uh, parade. At least one person is dead, 21 injured, including several children. And I know we're all, everybody throws up their hands and I, I watched a lot of news yesterday and I was in a lot of different forums. It's like, what can we do? Nothing can be done. Nothing can be done. And I think that's the wrong attitude to take. I'll go a step further. I think it's the coward's attitude to take to say nothing can be done. Well, how do we know? We don't try. It seems like since Sandy Hook, Mm. when babies four and five year olds yeah. were slaughtered and nothing happened after that. So I understand people's despair and this feeling like we can't do anything about it. Oh, and by the way, when I say that I'm not talking to the regular people, I'm talking to the leaders of this country who make the laws. That's the coward's way. I understand the frustration of people saying there's nothing we can do because when the people who we vote for lead us are doing nothing, that's what we're led to believe. But you said something very important right there. Yes. The people that we vote for. Exactly. And we're going to get to that. Absolutely. In a little bit. Uh, I do want, though, here we have a sound clip. Paul Contreras, uh, Contreras, I'm sorry, who's from Omaha, was at this rally yesterday. And there is video of him tackling one of the suspects. Yeah. And uh, Calvin, if you can play that sound clip, this is again from uh, Paul Contreras who was uh, tackling one of the gunmen yesterday in Kansas City. So he did. I didn't hesitate. It was just, just do it. So I went to go tackle him, and another gentleman did the same thing. And as I'm tackling him, I see his weapon either fall out of his hand or out of his sleeve because he was wearing a long jacket or like a Carhartt. So when I seen that hit the ground, I'm like, oh, you know, we got to take this guy down. And so, like I said, I did, and another good Samaritan did, and... We held him down. Contreras says the. As of late yesterday, Kansas City police have now three people in custody. They have recovered numerous firearms. They have not identified any of the suspects yet. Uh, They have also, at this point, not released the name of any of the victims. What can be done? What should be done? Gun safety. What can we do to make things safer for all of us? 844 967 Two seven eight nine. Stephen from Green Bay is on the line. Good morning, Stephen. Thank you for joining us. You know, Jan, this topic at this point, it is hard not to just, you know, obviously I feel sympathetic towards the people that were involved in this incident, but I'm also angered at the fact that we are doing nothing. And as a country, we are starting to sound real stupid when we go on air and we say, oh, there's another mass shooting. What are you going to do about nothing? Oh, there was another one. What are you going to do about absolutely nothing? We have to do something about it. The time for inaction was over a long time ago, and it's definitely over now. How many more American kids 
and Americans just in general, are we going to have to lose before we say enough is enough? And as far as the solutions to the problem, here's a couple of them that would be kind of easy. All you'd have to do is make some legislation on it. Um, how about, you know, uh, limiting the size of magazines? You know, a civilian doesn't need a 100-round magazine. How about taking uh, guns that the military uses, like the AR-15, off of the market? How about universal background checks? There's a the one that gets the right all mad and their whitey tidies up in a bunch. Which which most this people, all... which Stephen, uh, most people support. Certainly, yeah. uh, a majority of Wisconsinites support <coughs> universal background checks and support red flag laws. No one's gonna come and take all your guns. The NRA has been promising that for thirty years. That if we do anything about regulating guns, they're gonna come and take them all. Yep. That's never happened in 30 years. It's not going to happen now. Nobody wants to take your guns. I just want to make sure that people who buy them know how to use them, some basic training, a little waiting period. Yeah. Shouldn't be the end of the world. Universal background checks. There are a lot of things that a lot of us agree on. And it doesn't involve confiscating your weapons. You get the co- you get the weapon confiscated if you do something wrong with it, or if you just I mean honestly if you do something wrong too. Like there's some people who should not have guns. Period. And I know I've mentioned it on this show before, but I had a friend who was the police chief of Racine, and I asked him his thoughts on this matter, and he said he said as a, as a a person who works with a gun every day of my life, I have hundreds of people who work for me who carry guns. I want them to go through the same thing my I have to and my my officers have to, which is once a year training with a test to make sure you know how to load, discharge, clean the weapon. Your knowledge is up to speed. My officers have to do that once a year. And if they have to do it, why shouldn't everyone else have to? That seems like a very common sense thing to me. Yeah. It, I don't understand why that's such a reach. Because. And such an infringement. Because. You just said the word because that word is in the in the Constitution, and for some reason, and so is well regulated. Yeah, and so is militia. I don't see anybody banding together to form you know militias to take on you know the greatest superpower on the planet. So there's there's a load of hypocrisies within this. It just comes down to people don't like being told what to do. We've overblown this sense of quote what an American is supposed to be, and if you try to step on that, they don't get. They they whine more than they get mad, and Eight, they whine loud enough for people to hear. Yeah. 844-967-2789. We got a lot of folks stacked up on the phone. Please hang on. Charles from Green Bay, thank you so much for joining us. What did you want to say, Charles? Hey, Jane. It's nice to, see, nice to hear you talking about a good subject. Um, first of all, I'm not against the Second Amendment. I, I, I feel that people should be able to own guns. But I'm against the fact of that, and you and you've hit on the point that you can buy a gun that will discharge how many bullets per second or per minute, yeah. and do mass shootings. What about what about the guys who are you know this idiot from in Las Vegas that had that had guns that would you know a saw, which is not a gun for people to own. Check out check out what uh, how many mass shootings they've had in Sweden, Norway, and England and Australia. In the last 20 years. Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen there. Why? It's real simple. They've got really strict laws on certain guns. Australia had a mass uh-huh. shooting and they just outlawed the guns and that was it. Never a mass shooting since that I believe that's ever been reported. And and, and, and that's it, once again, what you, what you said, we're not trying to take them away. Nobody's talking about that, right, Charles? Nobody's talking about going door to door and knocking on the door or knocking in your door and taking your guns away. That's not what this is about. This is about some common sense steps we can take. Because, Charles, I don't know if you heard the John Stewart piece when he was talking to an Oklahoma lawmaker and he asked him, he said, the whole mantra is more guns make us safer. Mm-hmm. Well, we have 400 million guns in this country and 330 million people. When is that going to kick in? It's the number one killer of children. When is our, our safety with all of these weapons, when are we going to be safer with more guns? Thank you, Charles, for calling. Really appreciate it. 
We have Tom from L.A. up next. Good morning, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Jane. Uh, first off, we the people ultimately are the government and not the corporations, and we need to start really learning this and, and uh, realizing that. Um, second, I really think that it's important, I've been saying this for years, that we change the narrative in terms of the actual um, way that this is framed. It's not gun control, it's gun safety. Gun safety, yes. Um, everybody in the media will say gun control. Politicians will say gun control. Um, nobody wants to be controlled. And that's what the right, you know, will definitely harp on. So it, it, when, I went, when I was in Wisconsin, when I was young and I took gun safety class, I didn't take gun control class. I took gun safety yep. class. Mm -hmm. yep. And I think that we need to honestly keep on saying that because, you know, if you need an AR-15 to go shoot a deer, you're a pretty piss poor shot. Um, that's what I got to say in terms of, you know, hunters and people out there, which I think hunters and people out there are actually the most sensible people yes. and actually don't want to see AR-15s or machine gun. And if you look at Bill Clinton, when he actually uh, passed the assault ban weapon years ago, 42% um, of gun deaths went down. Yes. It was George War Criminal Bush that let that lapse. The assault weapons ban. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom. You, you made a lot, a lot of really good points. And, and I think... Words are important, mm -hmm. and the words that we use, as he said, to frame this are really important. And we have a comment on the uh, on the live stream from Just Dave. To take away guns would require a constitutional amendment, which requires two-thirds of the states to vote on it. That's not going to happen. Well, once again. No, it's not. And we're not talking about taking away guns. No. But. I see you on the line, Jack and Susan and Mary. We have a real short Pause, and we will return and keep this conversation going. 844-967-2789. This is Matt Nair on air on the Civic Media Radio Network. Welcome to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, Calvin on the board coming to you from our studio in downtown Waukesha. You can always join the conversation. Call or text at 844-967-2789 or leave a comment on the live stream if you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, or X Twitter. Tragically, <laughs> and I wish we didn't have to, but we had another mass shooting in our country yesterday in Kansas City after the victory parade for the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, one person is dead, at least 21 injured, and a number of those are children. And I don't want to hear any more thoughts and prayers. No. I'm just tired of it. Keep them to yourself. I mean, it's a, it's a that's lovely. That's fine. We need to do something. Yeah. This can't keep happening, and it does. Mm -hmm. We're not even 50 days into this year, and according to the Gun Violence Archive, we had 46 shooting, mass shootings already, and that's four or more people. Yeah. 844-967-2789. Jack from Merrimack is on the line. Good morning, Jack. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Um, first of all, the Australian uh, assault weapons ban definitely worked. The uh, Port Arthur massacre um, in the 1990s, and I don't have a lot of uh, dates or, or other information about it, but I do know the following uh, following that massacre, um, they basically banned assault weapons in Australia. And if you, as particularly if you define mass shootings as four or more people, then they haven't had a mass shooting since. Um, that Australia is is a pretty strongly right wing country. They're they're very conservative. 
the um, one of the legislators uh, from kind of the an outback area, from what I've read, uh, proposed uh, that assault weapons ban. He had political courage. And he got it through um, uh, their federal government. Uh, now, you can still own assault weapons in Australia, but you need some very, very particular special permits. Mm-hmm. I suspect, and I haven't, read the, I, haven't, I haven't read the law, but I suspect that owning an assault weapon in Australia is very much like trying to own a machine gun in, in, in the U.S. You need to be a collector or you need to have a special reason for it. Um, the... Uh, the legislator, by the way, as when I say political courage, that proposed this um, was actually voted out of office probably because of it. But it, it, the, the, the ban remains in effect and it remains effective. Yeah. Um, the next thing, and, and I'm, I'm going to give you a quote here. This is uh, about the um, uh, assault weapons ban. This is some data that was uh, um, derived from during when the assault weapons ban in the United States was in effect, and that was from 1994 to 2004. And here's the, here's the quote, and I'll make it as, as quick as possible. In the years after the assault weapons ban went into effect, the number of deaths from mass shootings fell, and the increase in the annual number of incidents slowed down, even including the 1999 Columbine High, uh, high School massacre, which was the deadliest um, mass shooting during the period of the ban, the 1994 to 2004 period saw lower average annual rates of both mass shootings and deaths resulting from such incidents than before the ban's inception. The data shows an almost immediate and steep rise in mass shooting deaths in the years after the ban expired in 2004. Yep. Breaking the data into absolute numbers between 2004 and 2017, the last year of the analysis, the average number of yearly deaths attributed to mass shootings was 25, compared with 5.3 during the 10-year uh, period of the ban and 7.2 in the years leading up to the prohibition. We calculated that the risk of a person in the U.S. dying in a mass shooting was 70% lower during the assault weapons ban. Yeah, it, it worked, Jack. So, it, 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 it worked. It, it did. And, and again... Nobody's coming for your guns. I don't want to come and take your guns. I don't want you're a hunter. You keep one for safety. That's great. But we're talking about gun safety measures. And yes, maybe tightening things up a little bit. I'm not going to speak for anyone but myself right now. And I want to come for some of your guns. If you are a person, one human, you don't need to own 75 guns. I just don't see the reason why. It just doesn't make sense to me. If you want 75 guns, I need a report. I need a reason why. That That's going to make up the hackles. <clears throat> a lot of everything people are going to raise are, their hackles about Everything that. we are talking about is going to raise the hackles. As long as we, if we, if we say a syllable towards this subject, their hackles get raised. If we're talking about it, that's what I think. I see pictures of people at their homes proudly displaying, not a collection, not historical, like these are my available weapons. That to me says there's that's not that's not correct thinking that you need that many weapons to quote unquote protect your two bedroom home. Thank you so much for calling, Jack. And as always, thank you so very much for listening. 844-967-2789. Susan and Mary, I see you on the line. If you can, please stick around. Uh, Susan, we'll try and take you real quickly. You've been waiting for a while. Thank you for your patience. What did you want to say? Oh, I just want to say this. I'm not for taking anybody's rights away from them. And as far as the Second Amendment Amendment is concerned, if they want this, these weapons, be my guest. But I want to say one thing. You're taking my right away from me to go to the store in peace. You're taking my grandchildren's right away to go to school without being fear, without the fear of being killed by some person walking in and shooting up the up the school, and I think we just need common sense um, gun laws, and then you know people can get on with their life. And it's it's kind of like Tom from LA said, Susan. Right? It's about it's about gun safety. It's not about gun confiscation, right? Yeah, I don't. 
don't want their guns. If they if they want 80 million guns in their house, fantastic. If that's what makes you happy, <laughs> but you let's have some gun safety here. People who have the kind of weaponry should be expected to take tests on a year. We do this with our cars yes. yep. and everything else. Why not with guns? Yeah. And I can't. And also, they have. Sorry, Susan. Have go ahead. To prove that they have to also prove that they're mentally competent. Well, and I, 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 I just always, I mean, and again, I don't hunt, but my brother-in-law is a big hunter, and I would think any self-respecting hunter would sneer at a fellow hunter who has to take an AR-15 out into the woods. Yeah, you're, you're not a hunter. You're not a hunter. You're, you're, a, po- you're a poser. You're a poser. Yeah. Thank you so much for calling, Susan. Really appreciate your perspective. Mary from Tosa, don't go away. We see all your calls and your comments stacking up. We'll continue this conversation. News is next. Stay right here. This is Matt Nair on air on the Civic Media Radio Network. You got to give more power to the people. Why don't you get more power to the people? Good morning. Welcome to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, Calvin Butenhoff coming to you live from our studio in downtown Waukesha. You can call or text. Join the show 844-967-2789. Leave a comment on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. As I mentioned at the start of the show, I really genuinely wish we did not have to spend this much time on this, but yeah. we have to. Yeah. There has been yet another mass shooting in our country. One person dead, 21 injured, including a number of children at a rally after the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl victory parade yesterday. Mm -hmm. Three people are in custody. We don't know their names. We don't know the situation. Police haven't released very many details at this point. But we're just talking about what can we do? What needs to happen? What changes can we make So this doesn't keep happening. We're not even 50 days into 2024, and we have already had 46 46 mass shootings. That's four people or more. 844-967-2789. Mary from Wauwatosa, thank you so much for your patience, Mary. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Jane and Greg. My focus on subject is on people, not on the guns. When I saw the video of uh, Paul Contreras, a man appearing to be of Hispanic heritage, how uh, important <clears throat> was his bravado in taking one of the shooters down. With that, I quickly flashed to the ugly immigration push that <clears throat> is going on, you know, to keep people who don't look like white America out. So if there's a positive that can come out of this, is uh, is our need to respect our fellow human beings. Um, hopefully others, you know, saw this too. And I personally was in awe when I when I viewed him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you very that, much. That takes, it does take an immense amount of courage We to all do like that. to think that we would do it. That and we that, would be the hero. Yeah, but, and I'm not saying you wouldn't, but it's it's easy to say, yes, I would. Oh, sure. I, we would all like to envision ourselves like that, right? Yeah. Uh, one thing to keep in mind about Missouri Missouri does not require background checks, training, or permitting. Mm -mm. Missouri does not have red flag or domestic violence gun laws. Missouri does not limit assault weapons or magazines. Missouri does not have waiting periods. And Missouri does not regulate open carry. I believe the the current governor is a pretty staunch like that. that yes, is, and he was there yesterday. Yes, he was. He was seen running from the scene. Yes, surrounded by Security. over eight 
hundred police officers. I saw someone this morning on Twitter say, well, "Good guys with guns. That'll that, well, that's all we need." There were a whole bunch of good guys with guns yesterday. There were eight hundred police officers there, and that is not. I am not in any way, shape, or form saying the police didn't do their job, but in a situation like that, that just goes to show more guns doesn't mean the solution. It has. It has yet. Statistically, statistically, yes, to be proven that 400 million guns in this country is making us safer. Yeah, there's no evidence to back that up. No, uh, we have some live stream comments that have been sitting here, and we want to go through them. A couple Andrew from Maine, District of Columbia v. Heller, which is a 2000, very famous 2000 Supreme Court decision, 2008, 2008. Sorry, uh, I knew words should be revisited without waiting 50 years, require every owner to be checked, trained, registered, and responsible. Like a vehicle. And that's something that constantly comes up. It's that comparison, a gun to a vehicle. We make, you know, like if you were a kid, you have to go through training. You have to take a test. When you're an adult, you still have to go through training and take a test. If you're an adult and want a gun, you have to go to that training and take a test. And uh, I believe it was PJ said something to the effect of, and you have to have weapon insurance. I don't even know what that entails, but if you had to have insurance like a car, I think that would keep people from probably taking their guns out for fear of going off or something happening. 844-967-2789, 844-967-2789. You can call, you can text, you can leave a comment. On the live stream, this from Scott McKellen, a friend of mine in Backwoods, Minnesota, owns over a dozen guns and su and supports gun safety measures. He has them for safety and his hobbies. He also supports gun safety legislation. Uh, people wanting all of their guns, people, those wanting all their guns, look at the words that are used, not the intent. And I agree with you 100%, Scott. Words are important. It's about gun safety, not gun control, because gun control means to them what it says at face value. Control. Yeah. And I think, and we also had Tiffany uh, chiming in as well, saying, I come from a hunting family. I'm not hunted in years, but I believe the types of guns used for hunting are regulated. For example, some countries can only... Uh, deer hunt with shotguns, not rifles. And I knew a, I worked with a very, very, very conservative man, a Vietnam veteran, and his whole stance was, you should have a weapon for your home for defense. You can have a weapon for hunting. After that, you need nothing else. That was it. Like he's like he's like you don't get to have any guns, but if you want a handgun or a shotgun to defend your home or a hunting rifle. But as Scott said, I mean, there are hobbyists and there are collectors. Yeah, absolutely. Right. But, uh, but, but, but what I'm saying is that a man who is that conservative, who thought that, you know, Bill Clinton was the antichrist. Well, sure. They, even gentlemen like that can have those beliefs that we're not, that we need some reasonable groups like the NRA try to make it seem like we are so heavily divided and there's, there's us and there's them and there's no in between when really all the reports have always said a vast amount of Americans believe that there should be gun safety, yes. background checks, yes. all those things. And unfortunately, the quiet those are the quiet voices because they're like, of course I believe that. Of course I believe. It's the loud voices that get to get in the halls of Washington and look at politicians' faces and say, if you don't vote for this, we will ruin you. Lots of money there. Oh, lots and lots and lots of money. Lots of money to be misused, too. Absolutely. Funny that you mentioned that. That's called a segue, people. Get on board. It's someone, radio. Someone mentioned the long head of the National Rifle Association. Uh, he has Wayne a La long head? Uh, Wayne LaPierre, who recently just got in a little trouble. Old Wayne Thoughts and Prayers LaPierre. Yep, yep. Wayne Thoughts and Prayers LaPierre, of course, had to resign as the head of the NRA, because there was a lot of financial hanky-panky going on with old Wayne. Oh, I thought they said it was Lyme disease. Well, he's, ostensibly he is ill, and I and I don't wish that on anyone. I don't. It just seems convenient. It, it does seem somewhat convenient. But in the course of this trial, it was revealed, I mean, Wayne LaPierre spent like $75,000 on suits. Hey. On suits. Man's got to look good when he's trying to uh, oppress people's uh, visions. And he only used them for press appearances, is what he said. And he also claimed that the only time he ever held a weapon was for a photo op. <laughs> so, wait, was Wayne LaPierre walking around the NRA offices in, like, juicy couture, like, 
like pantsuits and he just wears suits for press appearances. That's again, these, these really, really super expensive suits. That's what he said. Uh, so I don't know if you're looking for a nice secondhand suit, you maybe want to call Wayne. That's something I've always wondered about him. And I'd love to, I'd love to, to read a biography about him, you know, on, on, on an unauthorized that will get to the truth. Is it about his love for guns or is it about his love for power, money, attention, and does he not even care about guns? Well, and we've talked about this before. The NRA started as a gun safety organization. Mm-hmm. It was a hunter safety organization. Yep. They said for every, for every, I remember the quote I, I read, for every thousand bullets shot, they'd hit one person. That's how bad they were at shooting back in the day, in the, in the 19th century, in, in the military. A decade ago, the NRA seemed like an unstoppable force in politics. This was after Sandy Hook, Mm -hmm. 20 children gunned down. Democrats and Republicans were ready to pass some new safety regulations, but the NRA called on its members to contact their representatives, and so the bills got killed. Much like the people who were killed in mass shootings. Uh, Today, though, it, it is a different day because I think even gun owners... And even hunters yeah. have recognized that the NRA is not the, the institution that it used to be. No, it's and re- its mission is is not what it used to be. No, people have realized its mission has changed since it changed back in the '60s when it became more about lobbying than it was about empowering, if you will. And yeah. one of the one of the big one of the big turning points for them was the fact that the NRA. In uh, the the Mulford Act, I don't even remember what year it was, but in California, when they tried to, uh, when the the Mulford Act basically was a gun uh, a gun restriction law in California, and it was to combat the Black Panthers, and who was standing there next to the government trying to take away gun rights? The, the NRA, because the, well, the wrong people were having guns. Yep, yeah, exactly. Uh, whether you watch it on John Oliver talking about NRA, he's done two episodes on them with their TV station or this case that's going on. Yeah, they're kind of falling apart little by little. 844-967-2789. 844-967-2789. If you would like to join us in this conversation as we talk about gun safety regulations after yet another mass shooting, this time yesterday in Kansas City after the victory parade for the Kansas City Chiefs in their yeah. Super Bowl win. Uh, one person is dead, 21 injured. A number of them are children. We don't have a lot of other specifics either on the suspects. There are three people in custody or the victims at this point. When we do get that, we will pass that along to you. The other thing that has always stood out to me, you know where guns are never allowed? Where? At the NRA convention. Oh, that's right. Even though good guys with guns keep us all safer. Yeah. And I don't believe guns are allowed at the uh, CPAC, the big uh, right wing. I think you're right as well. The big right wing uh, political organization. No, you can't have guns there either. No, but why not? I have a gun. I am a gun. I'm an American gun. Let me into your party. Tom from L.A. texting in the only product that you can't be sued for hurting another person. And I've had this argument with other folks as well. Can you um, look at baby strollers? Yeah. If there was a defect with a baby stroller and two children got killed because of this defect in this baby stroller, and I know strollers aren't mentioned in the Constitution, (laughs) we would be recalling those strollers instantaneously. That would be instantaneously. That would be the responsible thing for the manufacturer to do. Yeah. And I keep on thinking about what you just said before about Sandy Hook. The fact that all these children, I'm sorry if this is triggering for those who are hearing this. I know that gun violence is very triggering for people. Um, All those children gone, teachers gone, and there's a group of individuals who said, we are going to make it our mission so that we can allow this to keep happening. We're not going to support this. We're not, we're going to call them, call these leaders and say, if you support this measure that could potentially help people, We are going to ruin your career and make you look like you are traitors. I mean, that that takes a special kind of person to do that. 
A lot of the comments I was seeing last night as I was scrolling around after this news broke was, what can we do? There's nothing we can do. We can't do anything. There's nothing we can do. I disagree. We can vote. Yes. That is the strongest weapon that we have to look at our elected officials, look at their records on this issue, and look at how much money they get. Oh, yeah. From the NRA. Because they rate our politicians. That's worth looking at. And fr- frankly, if you get like a B or, I mean, I'm sorry, if you get like a, a D or an F from the NRA, I'm like, I want to hear, hear what you have to say. Well, and speaking of candidates and politics, Joe McClear on the live stream, breaking news, California businessman Eric Hovde officially, officially rather, entering the Wisconsin Senate race. Mm-hmm. We've been kind of waiting to hear whether or not he would do that. So as we talk about our politicians and their stances on guns, because honestly, I think that is the only option we have anymore is the power that we bring to the ballot box. I mean, Scott just said right here, the ballot might is mightier than the bullet. 844-967-2789, 844-967-2789. Leave a comment on the live stream. Stay close. This is Matt Nair on air coming to you across the Civic Media Radio Network. Welcome to Matt Nair on air. Jane Matt Nair, Greg Bach, Calvin on the board. You can always join us at 844-967-2789, 844-967-2789. Leave a comment on the live stream as well. We are talking about yesterday's mass shooting in Kansas City after the Chiefs had their victory parade, their Super Bowl victory parade. One person is dead, 21 others injured, three people are in custody, few other details as far as that goes. But I was seeing a lot of despair last night about there's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do. Yes, there's something we can do, and we can vote. And we can get everyone we know to vote. Yep. Go out there, get yourself educated on the candidate who represents what you say, what you believe. Uh, you can go to myvote.wi.gov. And you can find out who your elected officials are. You can see what they stand for. You can see the money they get. Where they get it from, it's all out there for you to look if you really want to know this information. You know, we've been sitting here for nearly an hour talking about ideas, suggestions. None of them are new. No. None of them are new. None of them are groundbreaking. And honestly, none of them are controversial and or, well, maybe me taking away 90% of your guns. But none of what we're talking about is controversial and nothing we've said hasn't been said before by experts in psychology, medicine, politics. Whatever. People calling in. Thank you so much for calling in. I just want to address one texter we got in here. uh, Texting in from the 414 said, and I'm going to read it in a voice. Can I read it in a voice, Jane? You you may read it in a voice, Greg. Uh, Please. How dumb your suggestions are. Well, nameless person who didn't tell us who you are, that's fine. Keep your identity to yourself. They're not dumb. They're just some thoughts which are better than thoughts and prayers because we're trying to do something here. And if you have a better suggestion, we want to hear it. Let us know. Yeah. Call us up. Yeah. Send us a text message if you have some greater idea. But to just sit back and go, those are dumb. You're irresponsible. I don't like that kind of attitude. Well, and and again, this argument that more guns is going to make us safer, that has yet to be proven nope. accurate. Nope. We have 400 million guns in this country, 330 million people. We're not any safer. And when you and I can only imagine if you are in law enforcement or you know someone in law enforcement, the last thing you want is more 
people with more guns. Yes. They don't appreciate your quote unquote help. They're trained to take care of the situation themselves. Not to mention, if you take mass shooting deaths out of the equation, we still have more gun deaths per year than almost every other major com- country combined. It's the number one cause of our de- deaths in our children now. Yeah. Gun violence. But, but yes, you're right. Our suggestions are dumb. Well, we're, that's why we're talking about voting, because I think that is the most direct thing that we can do. And it pains me to say this, but U.S. voter participation is an embarrassment. It's embarrassing. The elections of 2018, 2020, and 2022 were three of the highest turnout U.S. elections in decades. So what are we talking about? In 2020, the president, the presidential election, 66% of the voting population turned out. You mean, the highest for any national election since 1900. 66%. And they have to work so hard. Those organizers and those groups have to work so hard to get that 66%. I know. We can do better than this. We should be doing better when we don't feel like democracy is absolutely threatened on the ballot. I I just think it's critical that we talk to the people in our lives, and I'm not saying tell them how to vote. No. Because I don't believe that we should do that. But talk to the people in your lives and make sure that they're registered. Yeah. And make sure that they understand if you want to bring up gun violence, if you want to bring up medical marijuana, if what whatever is the issue that concerns you, education, child care, the border. Um, you have to vet your candidate yes. and see where they stand on these things because just because the party ID, the R or D behind their name is not necessarily going to tell you everything. Yeah, and if you are granted an audience with one of these elected officials, whether they are seeking the office or currently hold the office, don't let their celebrity intimidate you. You need to hold their feet to the fire. If you, if they you work are, for us. they work for us. We pay them, and we pay them oh well. If you have a question, you deserve an answer. A situation like gun safety and gun control and gun deaths in this country, you have every right to a cogent answer. The other question that I was kicking around last night is because this is, and it may be the same for you, Greg, but but most of the people in my close orbits. Uh, my girlfriends and family members, we're pretty much on the same page yeah. politically. So what can I do if if I already know the people in my circle are voting, are engaged? Yeah. You can write out postcards. Yes. There's all kinds of ways you can volunteer. You can help people get registered. Yep. There's all kinds of voting rights groups that are looking for volunteers. You can knock on doors, find your candidate who you believe will represent you the best and Get on the street and get involved and do something. We can't all just continue to to sit at home alone and and sob about yeah. this. We have to take action. And the best way, in my opinion, is voting in massive, yeah. massive numbers. Uh, just Dave on the live stream. Thank, I'm going to thank him right away for this comment. If they if all they can do is call it, quote unquote, dumb and not support why they don't like the idea, they have no argument. Thank you very much, Dave. I agree with you. Dave, that goes back to what I've always said. If all you have are insults and uh, pro- profanity, you got nothing. Yeah. So you're going to have to take it a little bit further than that. We, this hour just. Whew. It did fly by. Thank yeah. you all so very, very much for all your comments and your calls. And as I said, when we started, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to have to talk about this. I'm tired of talking about It's this. National Wisconsin Day. We could be talking about that. Other things. But we're going to keep going and we're going to keep talking about it Yep. in order to affect some positive change that we can all agree on because I know we can. Yep. I know we can. Yes. Whether you vote right or left, we can come together on certain topics. Yes. We can agree without being disagreeable. And it's important to just get out there, get to know your candidate, vote, myvote.wi.gov. Wonderful website. So much information yep. there. Check it out. Yes. All right. News is coming up next. And then when we return, public cervix announcement with Dr. Kristen Lyerly. She has been a busy, busy OBGYN this morning. <laughs> like she's, today. she's like, there's babies everywhere. Babies, babies, babies. Babies everywhere. Babies in my pockets. Stay close. This is Matt Nair on air across the Civic Media Radio Network.